Suppose the Pope decided that, after all, the New Testament is not clear, which certainly it is not, um, that the tradition, after all, was phrased at a time when this really wasn't a practical option. Roles of women had not developed uh, in the world in the way they have now, and that therefore, moving as many of our sister churches in the West have done, women could be ordained in Roman Catholicism. I would guarantee you there would be a major schism that would take millions of people out of the Roman Catholic Church. If we've had virtually a schism over saying the Mass in Latin, you can be certain that we would have a schism over this issue. And their argument need not be doubted. You can see it in every ultra-conservative paper. Jesus chose only 12 men at the Last Supper so the Church cannot do anything else. The question would never be raised whether Jesus was thinking about priesthood, whether his choice of the 12 was not in relation to 12 thrones judging the tribes of Israel. But we all decided that he had the whole thing planned out and the church could not go against his intentions. So that you would be back to saying your doctrine can't go beyond a very simple reading of the New Testament. Suppose it went the other way. Uh, perhaps more likely. Um, and the Pope decided that it now had reached such a crisis that he could no longer speak simply directively, he had to speak authoritatively as occupant of the chair of Peter, and he had to issue a day fide day statement that this was a matter of revelation, tradition interpreting scripture. I would guarantee you there would be a large system also because many people would say, he can't do that. Jesus never said that only men could be ordained, and therefore the Pope can't say that. Now, whichever argument you think is right, the point is there will be a group that will go back to what Jesus did at the Last Supper as if he had the whole thing planned out either way. And I'm pointing out that we've never been able to live that way in Roman Catholicism. There have always been other factors, and I think really in most of Christianity, but I'll stick to my own church, there have always have been other factors at work. Factors of a symbolic nature, factors of a church feeling how it could live, what it could survive with, what was essential for its own being. And we better, as a community, be willing to face that factor. And I think that in a way, its own way, critical exegesis is bringing us up against that factor much more sharply than any other generation because now we're honestly asking ourselves, were all of these things clear in the minds of the authors of the New Testament, the preachers of the gospel, of the people who heard the gospel in the New Testament? I think we really want to be honest. We're going to have to say, no, they weren't all clear. And yet we do hold on to these as doctrines, many of the things I've mentioned. And therefore, we have to live with a church that moves beyond the New Testament and understand what is the basis of what we believe.